there's been something I've been meaning to say for quite some time. The Victorian Liberal Party has a lot to answer for. As an opposition, it's been party to what has happened to the state of Victoria and where the state now finds itself in. The O'Brien-led opposition has contributed to the suffering that many Victorians have been enduring. Why do I say that? Well, I say that because governments are meant to be held accountable by a strong opposition. And that's simply something you can't say about either Michael O'Brien's leadership or the ship that he's been steering in all this time. Which is also why Daniel Andrews, the Premier, has been able to run his agenda without parliamentary accountability or any scrutiny. A weak opposition has allowed the Premier and his Labor Party to behave in a manner that borders on being corrupt and lacking any morality. Michael O'Brien's leadership and a dearth of talent within the shadow ministry has been central to Victoria's problems. The opposition's weaknesses or its inability to find a voice has allowed Daniel Andrews to impose draconian lockdowns that have kept the Victorian people imprisoned for months. Now in that time, Michael O'Brien should have found a way to rise to the occasion, to show Victorians what Victoria would look like under a Liberal leader, but he hasn't. He's failed to rise to the challenge, to grab the cudgels and to do something with it. Victorians are tired of watching political figures simply sling mud or shout at them. And yet, that's precisely the method that Michael O'Brien has used. During the COVID crisis, Victorians have become prisoners to, and there's only one way to say it, a megalomaniac who appears to be relishing the role of warden of the state. And where has Michael O'Brien been through all that time? Why hasn't he managed to mount a campaign to help the Victorian people who have lost their jobs? Many of them have seen their livelihoods threatened. They've watched their businesses fail one by one and lost so many of their loved ones. Well, as leader of the opposition, Michael O'Brien should be rallying his members to speak out against those arbitrary restrictions that have been imposed on Victorians. He should have been pressuring the Premier night and day to do the right thing, and that is to learn to live with COVID and open up Victoria. Instead, he's conducted his leadership via social media and he's thought, hey, that's the job done. Only problem with that tactic is it simply hasn't worked. If Michael O'Brien is not prepared to fight for his fellow Victorians who have been suffering mightily, then who will? Being the invisible man in the opposition has done nothing to serve Victorians. It has also done nothing to hold the Andrews government to account. The opposition is as guilty through its inaction as has the Andrews government been through its criminal mismanagement of Victoria throughout this COVID pandemic. Michael O'Brien and the state opposition have given the Premier the reign to do almost whatever he wants. And he's certainly taken that opportunity and he's run with it. A strong opposition and strong leadership is what actually leads to strong government. But Michael O'Brien's ineffectiveness as a leader has created a problem so vast that on the surface, it seems that Victoria may never recover from Daniel Andrews' disastrous legacy. The Liberal Party's so-called re realistic roadmap out of the hole that Victorians found themselves in for the past eight weeks was an illustration of that. It's not been bold enough. Admittedly, the opposition said it would allow restaurants, retail and offices to reopen with the appropriate social distancing measures in place. And they said they would ease restrictions for those attending weddings, funerals and religious services, something that the Andrews government has steadfastly refused to do. But the opposition planned to base these decisions on a rolling 14-day average, with the figure being 10, as opposed to the Andrews government rolling figure of 5. So the plan, you could see, was simply not bold enough, and it would have meant that Victorians would still be locked down for a protracted, for a protracted time. The opposition's plan didn't differ too much from the government plan. Rather than being a voice of reason, and to show Victorians just how they could live with the virus. 
O'Brien has essentially followed the Premier. You can't win by doing that. You've got to stand up and lead, not be a follower. Further, the opposition has allowed Daniel Andrews to change his initial strategy from wanting to flatten the curve and prepare the health system to cope with the onslaught of projected hospitalisations to simply keeping people locked up indefinitely, either until the virus has been eradicated or a vaccine that, de that is deemed safe can be found. So instead of taking on the Premier and showing up the hypocrite and showing up his hypocrisy, the opposition has allowed Daniel Andrews to change tack and not be held accountable, even though he was moving the goalposts, something that should not have been possible to do if the Liberal Party had been strong enough to do the job of opposition and not let the Premier simply get away with it. And there's been another misstep for the O'Brien leadership, and that's been his lack of outrage over the Andrews government proposal to introduce the insidious omnibus bill. Why was Michael O'Brien not out there every day speaking against the Premier's proposal to turn Victorian against Victorian with this immoral omnibus bill? Where was he? Late last week, the controversial bill passed the Upper House, which meant that the state of emergency in Victoria was going to be extended until April of next year. Now, unless Michael O'Brien can actually stand up and fight for Victorians, he will be as guilty as Daniel Andrews has been for the destruction of what was once the world's most livable city. Now, I understand that the state election is two years away, but the state opposition needs to step up quickly and to demonstrate to all and sundry that it can be bold and it does have the courage required, along with the smarts, to actually lead Victoria. And if the task of leading the opposition is too big a job, or standing up to Daniel Andrews and advocating for all Victorians is too difficult, then the time might well be right for Michael O'Brien to step aside, because Victorians certainly deserve better.